This is not good. 4.8 magnitude near Santorini again. And this only three months after the last crisis that lasted almost a month. And now we're basically in the middle of tourist season. So people in Santorini are very worried. What is this? Because this was not an isolated earthquake. It was accompanied by other earthquakes in higher magnitude. So it's still unclear. Is this a single quake or it's the start of another swarm, an earthquake swarm that we had in February. This would be devastating for the island, but we know definitely that tensions remain in the surface underneath the crater at Santorini going up where we've seen Twerks and Nudros and Amorgos. There's the underwater volcano Colombo. Tensions are in place. There was a magma intrusion in February that has started this massive earthquake swarm. A magma intrusion starting from the magma chamber underneath Santorini. The beautiful island is a massive crater of a volcano that is capable of unleashing devastating volcanic eruptions accompanied by devastating tsunamis. So it seems the tensions that are still in this area, there's lots of fault zones as well. And we know Colombo had some activity. So the tensions in the subsurface could be, of course, related to that magma intrusion and could have now activated a fault zone on the northern edge of that trench where we have the two volcanoes, Santorini and Colombo, in place. And will this lead to further trouble? That is the big question. Because, guys, if we look at this, if we zoom in here, we have Santorini here, and we have the Colombo underwater volcano here, and we have Amorgos, Anudros, here. And between, now it refreshes, between these two islands here, we've had that massive earthquake swarm in February. And you see, there's still earthquakes in the same area. From here, that's near Kameni, from that little island here that is full of lava, where we had the last small eruption in the 50s, there is a magma chamber underneath. And we have also recorded a land rise here in these areas. So the magma intrusion was going that way and triggering that earthquake swarms. And of course, there's lots of fault lines. Let me see if I can get a better picture. There you see. There's fault lines here everywhere and even more than we see here right now. And here's the epicenter of that earthquake in the University of Greece has it at 4.6. The USGS has it at 4.8 at a depth of eight kilometers. So we see this is this one here. And it was accompanied by another 2.7 magnitude earthquake, very shallow. So everything that's Pink here is six hours, red is 12 hours. So pink, we have another one that's, let's see, let me get that one. Yeah, a 1.7. So is that the beginning of another earthquake swarm? That is the big question because the location is really where we all seen the problems in February. And 4.6 for volcanic activity here in that region or tectonic activity is in the higher range. Don't compare it with normal earthquakes and subduction zones, tectonic earthquakes, where you say, oh, only six or seven is high. No, for this stuff, this is significant. To be precise, the epicenter is roughly 30 miles northeast of the little island of Oya. Just a few miles southwest of the epicenter, we have the small island of Anudros, which was the center of this earthquake activity this spring. And since we had more earthquakes with aftershocks, witnesses felt it and they said the tremor of the main earthquake lasted at least seven seconds and was accompanied by a low frequency rumbling. So it could be heard. That's the scary part I always find. So the reports, of people that have felt the earthquakes 
are coming right now as far as like 180 kilometers radius around that epicenter. And also numerous reports from Athens, but also from Turkey, Izmir. And we know when that earthquake swarm in Santorini happened, the Turkish scientists were way more aware of the situation and have warned about the dangers than the local authorities where they said, oh no, this is just some fault lines. It's not magmatic. The Turks already said it's probably magmatic. I said it and we were right. So the people of Santorini are likely unpleasantly reminded of February and they're worried that should this continue right now, these events with the earthquakes, is this another swarm in the middle of vacation holiday season? This could lead to cancellation of bookings. The cruise ships could stop again, which they did in February, to stop at the island. So this is financially, Santorini is a money maker for Greece. So this could be a real problem here. And then just prior to that one, we just had today another 4.9 magnitude earthquake off the shore of Crete, where Etna is just erupting. So what is going on? It's a lot of rumbling. These are probably not connected, they're not. So all we can do right now is basically wait and see how this will develop. Hopefully it's going back to silence. But, you know, there's a lot of problems on Santorini with these cliffside hotels, bed and breakfasts, and the cliffside pools. We learned that in February that many scientists, local scientists and specialists said, you know, this could all come down as a landslide. And I've reported about many landslides. You see how quickly that goes. And, you know, this is not solid rock here. This is a crater made of volcanic rocks. They're more brittle they can be more saturated with water and rainwater and they can come down more easily and many of these buildings we have learned are not up to code are illegally built and especially if you have a pool full of water and then there's an earthquake it could come down the cliffs that's a real risk so if you book something there maybe not front cliff front side i wouldn't do that although it's spectacular to swim in one of these pools but we've already seen in February when the earthquakes were shaking that there were some small landslides. Smoke was coming down from the cliffs. So I think we should take the warnings of the local scientists serious. Uh, they have built more and more and more. So they have built some illegal stuff. They have cut some corners to put up hotels quicker because it's in such a high demand. Locals are already angry because they're saying we're losing our island, the beauty of our island, the beauty. That's the reason why people want to come here. It's overcrowded. It's millions of people that are coming there. So it's a, it's a different situation for the locals. They live off the tourism on the one side, but they're losing the beauty of their island on the other side. And now this earthquake stuff and volcanic stuff that is kind of concerning. And since February, they said they had installed more sensors and surveillance equipment at Colombo, the underwater volcano that has shown signs of land rise and activity and fumaroles, but we're not hearing anything. We are not hearing what's going on with Colombo. Is that because the tourist season is endangered? I don't know, guys, really, I don't want to take any assumptions. Uh, it's just a little strange that there is not more information about what's going on. It's been quite silent. And I think it is because of the tourist season. Let me know your opinion, guys. And if you want to know what happened in Canada and Alberta, beautiful Banff National Park in the Rocky Mountains, a landslide, a rock slide, huge rock. Rocks were falling down very, very quickly, lasted about a minute, a whole I don't even know how to describe this. They, they call it like a, a rooftop was coming down. Like you see it in the picture in the video, how that slap came down, chasing hikers. And unfortunately also we know like one to two people are lost. That's confirmed right now. Um, check out the video in the end screen. It's going crazy right now with these rock slides, glacier collapses, mountain peak collapses and landslides. So, Thanks for watching, guys. If you want to support the channel, the links are in the description. And I see you soon. Bye-bye.